lovely. It's Roger and James here from the Disney Kingdom podcast. In this episode, we're going to be talking through our top three attractions over at the Animal Kingdom in Walt Disney World. It's kind of going through them, taking in turns. So I'm going to kick off with my number one, and that's going to be Kilimanjaro Safari. Um, for me, easily one of the most enjoyable attractions there. Um, I'm never too fan of the queues there, so it's always kind of cool to see if you can get a fast path. But the idea of sitting on a truck, going around looking at real animals you know there's not there's no animatronics there's no i mean they try and feed in this story thing but you know it changes every time you know you, we got once and there's a you know a rhino in the middle of the road and basically just snarled it up for two three minutes so we actually got to see that one very good my one complaint is <clears throat> having been on an african safari in in um, tanzania for um, because <laughs> they're on, a, on there once with my wife and my wife, oh, is this like being in Africa? I said, no, you've just squeezed my entire five days into, into like five minutes. Um, you, we drive around here, it's so fast. I said, when you find an animal in Africa, you sit there and watch it for two hours. <laughs> you know, and how we're here is a little bit faster. So, but I just love the fact of the amount of space and that feeling of you're at, it's a safari with some big animals. You know, there's a lot of ones in there. That you might not normally see at your local zoo, depending on your local zoo, but um, it's just it, it's also the amount of space that that ride or that attraction takes up. You know, you've got to do it. It's definitely on. I must do. It is, and um, uh, two points on that one. First, I think they've pretty much ditched the story element of it. It, it used to be like you're looking for poachers in the area and they still got the props for it, but they, all the, yeah. the, the commentary, it's now literally, all right. And if you turn around this corner, Oh, look, it's some hippopotami and, and stuff like that. Uh, we did have, um, not a rhino, but we had a giraffe blocking yeah. ours, which was always kind of fun. And then, uh, the second point, you, you know, your wife was asking, is this like a real safari? It's like, it's the same way a safari is that epcot <laughs> is to yeah. england or canada or yeah. japan it's like very no this is version. <laughs> this is this is the disney version yeah. of a safari uh but yeah i agree completely it's it's a lot of fun i make sure to try to get a fast pass to do it i don't like waiting in that line yeah. but it, it's fun uh you often get to see cool stuff uh the only one that's that's kind of variable on it is the lions because the lions seem to have figured out where to sit to not be seen but they just lie around all day anyway <laughs> i know but but that is important for the animals i, I know what you did there but yeah. that's beside the point um <laughs> it it's important for the animals to be able to to hide when they want to but it, which can be disappointing but at the same time there's so much to see on this they've got the rhinos giraffes uh gazelles warthogs hippopotami alligators all sorts of fun stuff i do want to do i guess it's called the jungle trek maybe yeah, you can do where, where you can do the, yeah. the rope bridge kind of thing i've yeah. never done that that does look like it'd be fun yeah, it's quite expensive though isn't it? i think it's about a hundred or so dollars it's not yeah. it's not a cheap not a cheap one personally i'd like to have a little bit more time doing it but i just love the fact as well that the animals have got that much more space you know they're not just in an enclosure constantly you know they've got a little bit they are in an enclosure but there's a bigger enclosure which is kind of the cool thing. And obviously that's a core cool part of the Animal Kingdom. Okay, so let's jump over to now to your first choice. And I'm going to make my first choice dinosaur. Uh, but I'm going to qualify and say that that might be more for nostalgia reasons than for the current state of the ride because it seems to be uh, in a let it rust mode, which if you're not familiar with the term is we will fix it just enough so that it works. Yeah. Um, because the last time I, I went on it, uh, half of it wasn't working. Like, there, there's that final drop right at the end where you're like, oh, we're going back into the future, and nothing bad can happen. Oh, my goodness, there's a Carnotaur. It's going to eat us, and then you drop right under it and, and go away. Last time I did it, that Carnotaur never appeared. It, it just yeah. wasn't there at all. But the it's, ride is still the same. Yeah, I mean, so. I like the actual ride vehicle because, obviously, it's very similar to the um, Indiana Jones and, one. Um, from like Parrot, uh, from sort of Tokyo and Disneyland. But the thing is that it's odd because it was almost the kind of thing like they did that one and then they kind of released Dinosaur way back in the 90s and refurbished it to kind of fit into it because it wasn't originally designed for that. Um, but it's that kind of odd thing of like, you really picked an odd movie that you forget that you forget was a Disney movie because it's way down the pile of, of ones to do it. Can't help but feel the whole of Dinoland is currently near extinction and getting ready to be turned into something else because that whole area has just become a little bit of a wasted space. 
Yeah, it definitely has. And I would expect that after Toy Story Land comes out, and probably after Galaxy's Edge opens up, uh, Dino Land might be one of the, the next ones in line for, yeah. for refurbishment. I would not be at all surprised if this ride actually probably completely disappears, not even gets turned into something else, but just they, they replace yeah. it. Uh, just, turn Sorry, it into, just turn it into Indiana Jones. Just recreate I'd, it. Um, I think Indiana Jones has got a lot. I mean, if they reboot the series and stuff, but as a host, to it, I always enjoy it. I always like doing it because I like the the attraction. But it's that kind of thing of it's it's aging badly, and because Disney aren't putting the effort into keeping it, because if like you say, it feels like they they're not. They're, it's no longer considered to be one of their top attractions. Yeah, and I strongly suspect that. If the good dinosaur had done fairly well uh, in the theaters, if it had done better critically, we would have heard by now that, oh, we're going to keep the dinosaur attraction, but we're going to retheme it for the good dinosaur. You're going to go back and meet Arlo and and all this stuff. But that didn't do very well. It got overshadowed by other Pixar movies that came out in the same year. So either the whole of Dino Land turns into something else. I know they're already talking about re-theming it uh at least temporarily this summer uh, i forget what the theme is going to be but um uh they're sticking something in there temporarily it's still dinosaurs yeah. but it's being guided by a different character yeah. I don't it's, it's, it's a bit of an odd one. area i mean the whole carnival area um, it's all just cheap stuff it's right it was put in there to fill the park out and they've just never really done anything with it despite all that it is a fun ride uh yeah. it's enjoyable it's worth doing at least once especially since animal kingdom uh doesn't necessarily have all that many thrill rides it's one of the few that's there and if you do not want to sit in line for four hours in the pandora section of the park dinosaurs wide open yes uh, so i'm going to flip over now to uh, my second choice which is going to be expedition everest the big roller coaster the big one that um definitely just jumps out to me as being one of the great roller coasters that edge of the finger, that's, it, it, it's a little bit on that scary side of it. It just pushes the boundary just a little bit more. I know when I took my wife on it the first time, I'd forgotten how big the drop was, and I'd forgotten about the back bit, and she was not happy with me, because I said, oh, it's a bit like Big Thunder. Yeah, yeah it's not. It, it wasn't, and she wasn't happy with me afterwards, because um, she said that was nothing like Big Thunder. It was a lot bigger than that. Um, I love it. I love the theming of it, the, what the, the, the size of the, the just that big drop. A backwards bet. Um, I love roller coasters, and there's that thing of like, uh, but I'm getting to that point now where the big roller coasters are getting my brain and head, stomach aren't liking them as much as they used to. This one is still that kind of, oh, this is pushing me to the to the top end, but it's in a good way. It's Disney do a good, better job of kind of, they don't quite take you that whole way. Um, so it's a little bit more for everybody. Yeah, this isn't on my list. Um... For me, it's just on the other side of I can only ride it once because my, like you said, my stomach is Here not <laughs> particularly happy with me after I ride. It's not like I'm I need to go sit next to a trash can in case I throw up kind of ride, but it's definitely a, you know, I'm done. I'm done this. I'm gonna go off and watch. It's tough to be a bug and kind of do a yeah. relaxing thing for a little bit. Yes, it is. A, it is a fun ride though, and I got to give them. A lot of um, props for the presentation of yes, the ride. Yes, very good. So, uh, not just you know that starting point, but where they actually do the whole thing, like you're clanking up and you're like, okay, we're gonna go over the drop and yeah. wait, where'd the tracks go? The tracks are not supposed to bend at that angle, yeah. and then you get the little short yeah. animation with the Yeti running away and all that stuff, and then and then they do the the backwards drop and stuff like that. So, very well done with that. Very few roller coasters take the effort to to really tell a story they might yeah. you know window dressing a story but this one actually does have that that element of like oh, something's happening here yeah. and the ride is actually part of the entertainment as well the only other yeah. place i've actually kind of seen that is at bush gardens yeah. uh, where a couple of their rides have sort of stories to them i also like that they you know and then afterwards, go and go into yakking yeti and have your dinner because yeah, you don't want to do it first because otherwise you are yakking and yetiing. Uh, <laughs> um, it's that kind of thing as well. Of I do like the fact it's got a single rider line, so usually I can jump yes. in there and kind of get that attraction quite quickly done. On my life side, so I. It's funny you mentioned uh, the River Rapids. I'm not adding that onto my list because on the last two visits to the Animal Kingdom, 
it was close. Did I say, uh, did I say uh, the River you know, Rapids? Yeah, you're not actually one of your choices, but you, you just mentioned that it's in that area. Um, it's that thing of like, I can't, I like, I think I went on it like 20 years ago when the park opened, but every time I went, it was closed. So that one's, that one's why that area, I can't remember the ride because it was, I think it was like 19 years ago I rode the River, the river Ride and the last two times we couldn't do it. So that's that one. So now I'm going to push over to your second choice. My second choice is going to be not a ride, but the River of Light show, which opened up, uh, I think, last year, actually. And it's not my favorite of the shows. I think that would actually probably be Illuminations over at Epcot but or Fantasmic at uh, Hollywood Studios. But it's still a very good show, and it's different enough from the other ones that it's distinctive. It's worth going to if you're going to have multiple nights at the parks because... You know, it, you have to be there four nights, really, to get all of them, unless you know exactly how yeah. to get between Magic Kingdom and Epcot to do the yeah. fireworks and whatnot. But it's fun. It's it's not very different thematically from Illuminations, but the way they do it is much different. They've got the boats. They've got the, the little yeah. pedals going around. I know you haven't had a chance to see it yet. No. Um, but... It's it's fun. It's worth seeing. It's got the theater style uh, seating, like say Fantasmic has. Uh, I don't think it's going to become like one of the must see things. If I were going to say to a person, you know, you're only going to be there two nights. These are the shows you need to see. You know, point to Fantasmic, point to Illuminations. I would even point to like say the fireworks show at Magic Kingdom, something like that. Yeah. Having said that, though. If you're already at Animal Kingdom or you're going to end the day at Animal Kingdom, it's a great way to end the night. Well, this is the thing. Cause, um, um, I'm going to be going there um, probably around now. Um, but it's going to be that thing of having a light show. Because previously at the Animal Kingdom, you kind of got to like 4 o'clock in the afternoon and the park was closing at 5, 6. Right. And then it was Done. it was always that thing of, you know, they even the, 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 had the bus that took you down to um, Disney Spring or downtown Disney. Because it was always like, right, you'd, you finish there and then you would go off to somewhere else for a, a firework. Now you've got a night show and you've got the night stuff coming in. It's going to turn this into a bit, much bigger park and much much more longer. And it'll be nice to be there. You know, this is going to be the thing I'm looking forward to is being there in the evening and seeing the, a night show and seeing, you know, the Avatar area all lit up. Which is why none of the Avatar stuff's on my list because I haven't, they'll be doing it on my next vacation. Right. But as of right now, I have not done it at the time of recording. So uh, I'm just going to tack on to that real fast. Um, do Kilimanjaro, uh, the the roller coaster, sorry, not Kilimanjaro, but uh, Everest. do the roller coaster at night. Because uh, yeah. as you remember, half of it is inside the mountain. Adding on the nighttime makes it three times as dark. So it, the experience changes a little yeah. bit in a, in a good way. So, okay. so I'm not going to jump on to my um, third one. Now this one, this one was actually a bit of a tricky because I couldn't quite. They, this was like, there's like four or five little like shows and stuff, and I'm going, I don't really know. Tough to be a bug? Do I go Nemo? Do I go Lion King? I enjoy them all, and, but I actually went on. I'm going to go for Flights of Wonder because you know you sit there, you've got the birds flying around, they're kind of giving you a little bit of a story. It's hands-on experience a little bit with with animals. Now. As of the time of recording, they've just closed this and it's being turned into a they're bringing in up character. So it's gonna slightly change. Next time I see it, it's gonna be different. Um hopefully it'll be it will be fully open by then. I think there's only a little slight change. But for me, this attraction is about being with animals and a little bit of learning, seeing some different things. I've always enjoyed going and seeing bird shows, but for me, this kind of gets that thing this feels different to everything else at, at the Disney parks. This is back to being um, an animal, an animal kingdom. Yeah, this is the kind of thing you expect to see at a zoo. Yeah. Or, you know, that kind of thing, which Animal Kingdom is supposed to be mirroring to a degree, so it makes sense. Um, it's probably not the show that I would have picked. I probably would have picked The Lion King just because that one's so much fun and they got the, the trapeze and stuff yeah. like that. But, yeah, the the, the Flight of Wonder, um, it, it's a good show, and there are actual birds, and the birds are trained, and they will fly around. And sometimes you got to duck and cover and all sorts of fun stuff. It is sad that uh, they're changing it, but we haven't seen what the new no. one is. And I honestly, the new one's probably going to be very, very similar to what this is, just with the the Kevin, <laughs> the, yeah, with the makeup of the up characters on top of it, which honestly is probably a good thing yeah, because that's that's more. 
more likely to get the kids to go, oh, I want to see Kevin or Doug. I don't yeah. know if Doug's going to actually be in it or not, but recognizable up characters is yeah, easier than a bird's. Especially when a big eagle lands on top of Kevin's head, you know, because he's yeah. not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, oh, so whatever. that, it's definitely, I think, I I just like it because it's a little bit simple and it's a little bit, it's a little bit more animal based. Um, as much, I, I mean, I love going in and sitting down and watching the theatre shows. They are, it's, you know, if I was doing a top five, those two would have easily just slid onto it. Um, and it's part of the big thing about being at the Animal Kingdom, just sitting back and relaxing. And there's a lot of shows. And when you look on paper, you go, there's not a lot there. And you go, well, hold on, Nemo's 40 minutes and 20 minutes over. You know, that's where you can kind of suck up your time. But I just find it, I find it endearing. And it's something that I, I it's definitely on my, it's on the list to go and do. It's obviously because it's going to be new next time. But it's like, I like, I just like, it's just like, it's just nice, nice, nice attraction. So what's your final one? So my final one is going to be Disney's number one line simulator right now, yeah. which is Avatar Flight of Passage. Uh, at the time of recording, the average wait time in that ride is still somewhere in the range of two to three hours. Um, the first time I tried to get on this ride, I actually wasn't able to, to get on it on that trip. It had a wait time of 190 minutes before the park opened. So, you know, that should tell you how... <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. That, I, 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 where are the, where, how are they all been sleeping there overnight for the night before? <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what we found out. That's what happened is that uh, people showed up at the park starting at like four or five o'clock in the morning and people were like, are you here for flight of passage? Yes, we are. Okay. Just, just get in line, get out of everyone else's way, get in line for flight of passage. And the park opened, look at the little Disney app, 190 minutes. And here's the one thing that I'll tack onto that, which is, Having ridden on it uh, precisely once, it is one of the few rides where I'd go, yeah, I might actually wait three hours for that. It is a yeah. really good ride. Now, I would much rather get a fast pass. Yeah. And if if you are planning a trip and you've got the two hour or sorry the two month window because you're staying on property, this should be the absolute first thing on any of the Disney sites that you're looking at. Yeah. is the flight of passage for a fast pass. It's yeah. one. It's one of the things, no, no way this ride could live up to the hype. No way it could be that entertaining. And and then I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going yeah. to to tell you guys what's on it. Um, I'm going to let you experience it for yourself, hopefully on your trip. But, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, so I, this, I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be trying to, get, make, trying to make sure I get fast passes for this. And it, to be honest, it might even be, this might be the issue of, I have a plan of going on for a particular day. But if the fast pass doesn't work out, I'll have to get on a different day. We might the entire trip could shift depending on the fast pass for this ride, because I know my wife will not stand in line for three to four hours for a show, for a ride. And she I, will. I can't she just will not do it. And there is that kind of thing of like if I I re, I, ha, I want to do this attraction when I go there, but I can't do two three hours in a ride attraction. I just can't do it. You know, you're on vacation, and it's as much as it might be amazing. That much time sucked into one thing is not going to work. So the fast pass is, it's my number one thing to get a fast pass for. If I don't get it for that day, um, I mean, I'm. It's, it depends really on how it goes because I'm going to have to get it 30 days before it. But it's my one thing I want to do, do them both. And I've told everybody in our party, we have to sort, we have to arrange what days we're going to these parks. And we have to make sure if we want to go to Animal Kingdom that we're all on board on Getting, I mean, I'm going to book my own fast pass separate to the rest of them just because I'm not well. <laughs> I've literally got a lot of lines of, I know what I'm doing. So I'm like, you, you're you all on your own on this one. I'm just going to make sure I get my, me and my wife a fast pass. That's the, you know, the major thing. <laughs> because it's like, I can't be d dealing with everybody else because otherwise we're not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. It, Every man for themselves. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of hoping by the time you get there, which might be yeah. around the same time this episode yeah. is airing, but it, uh, it'll be in May or whatever, that it might have died down a little bit. But May is also the beginning of the really busy season, so probably not. Yeah. But, yeah, this ride is excellent. And, again, without going into spoilers, if they can use this technology – uh, and advance it even a little bit more for Galaxy's Edge uh, or any of the new areas coming after Galaxy's Edge, there's going to be some excellent rides in our the future. Only, yeah. The only thing they have to do is they have to triple the capacity. On any of these attractions, oh, they really the, need to up 
how many people they're trying to fit onto these and do and, it right from the word go and just whatever you think you're going to build double it i uh, know triple it yeah. um and actually when you see this ride uh take a second to look around once the ride starts yeah because you, you'll the first when you start it you'll think it's just a group of like six of you yeah. but then you'll you'll look around you'll be like well there's a ton of us doing mm. this ride all yeah. at the same time and then like and it's not enough to not have it at a three hour wait yeah so you know but we'd love to know what you guys think are the top attractions for animal kingdom let us know in the comments below go check us out over at kingdom you can like follow and subscribe james where can they find you I mean, heroiclegacy.com. I'm like that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon. Laters. Later. Later.